What's up guys, this is Taking the Field with Stevie Mack and on this episode we've got some big news in the Premier Lacrosse League this morning as the Atlas have traded midfielder Paul Rabel to the Cannons for some draft picks. Now they'll get the number 9 overall entry draft pick this year, a number 8 overall pick in this year's college draft, and a first rounder in the college draft in 2022. So by my count, the Atlas now have two top 10 picks in the entry draft this year with number three and number nine, and they'll also have a three top 10 picks in the college draft this year as well with number eight, which was, or excuse me, with number one, which was their original pick with number eight which they just got from the cannons and number 10 overall which was again one of their original picks this year so now the atlas also holds six picks in that 2022 college draft because they got a second rounder from the redwoods in exchange for rob pinnell a few weeks ago and now they got the cannons first round pick in that draft as well along with i would assume their own original four picks which we'll find out next year what those picks will be but another thing to take note of here real quick is that the atlas also sent the cannons their original first round entry pick which was number six so if you remember after that pinnell trade a few weeks ago they had number three from the redwoods and they also had their original pick of number six that sixth pick is now gone the cannons now own it but the atlas still hold number three and number nine in that entry draft that loaded entry draft of those mll players that are now in the pll player pool so really the atlas can still get a couple really solid players with those picks and i believe i looked at it before recording this episode i believe they also hold number 14 possibly or number 16 one of the two i can't really remember off the top of my head there but so they do have several picks within the first 15 16 picks of that entry draft as well. And I know I said in the Pinnell trade episode a few episodes ago that on a scale of 1 to 10 with my rebuild meter for the Atlas, I was at about a 4 with that Pinnell trade because it was really Ben Ruby or calling it what it was and calling it a rebuild. And the Pinnell trade, I think, was just the first step in getting that rebuild going. And now I think that with the Rabel trade, it puts me at about an 8 or a 9. I'm leaning towards more towards a 9 on this one out of 10 on the rebuild meter because I think if you had done something completely uh, drastic and traded that number one overall pick like I've mentioned on past episodes to a team like the Chaos who are loaded with draft capital, then I think for me that would have put the... the um, the rebuild meter, excuse me, at about a 12 on that one. But with this Rabel trade now between those two that they've pulled off, I'm, I'm at about a nine right now with it, which is a really good place to be at, I think, going into the entry draft and the collegiate draft here in the next few months. But like I said, it's really just Ben Ruby or calling it what it is and essentially just going for it here in 21. He's not waiting till 2022 to get it done and really get this rebuild to where he wants it to be. He's getting it done right here and right now. And like I said, we still have to wait for those entry draft and collegiate drafts to see what he does with those picks later on this spring. But I think at least having those options with those picks is going to be a big thing for this team. And I think one of the biggest things that it does for this Atlas roster as a whole is that they've gotten younger with these trades because Pinnell is 31 and on the last year of his deal that he got, that two-year deal when he came in through the entry draft last spring. And he's a guy that the Atlas probably at that age and at that stage in his career probably weren't going to re-sign him going into his age 33 season in 2022. And I think the same can be said about a guy like Paul Rabel sitting at 35 years old. I don't know really what his contract situation looks like and how many years he possibly had left on it. But he was a guy that didn't really produce at all during the championship series. Had about one or two goals, I think, for the entire two-week event. So really didn't produce at much of a high level in that championship series. And also, for the first half of 2019, seemed to struggle 
as well going up against that highly touted PLL competition. But those last four or five games or so of 2019 definitely showed that he can still play at a pretty high level. So I think here the Cannons are kind of hoping that he can get back to that where he was at those four or five games and just do that for an entire season for maybe the next one or two years before he calls it quits. But trading the two old or two of the oldest guys on the team, not necessarily the oldest, but two of the oldest guys on this roster means that you likely weren't going to protect them as this move comes right after the deadline for those protected lists from the PLL teams for this expansion draft coming up later on in the month of March. So for me, it means that by trading those two guys, you probably weren't going to protect them. So you, you tried to get something for them rather than have them potentially just walk over to the cannons locker room and be a part of that roster for nothing. So I like the fact that they were able to move both those guys and get draft picks in return because now it really Really allows you to focus on building around your young core of guys, just to name a few guys like Jack Kincannon, Cade Van Raphorst, Trevor Baptiste, Romar Dennis, Brian Cosbiel. I mean, the list goes on because really what you're left with after this trade is only about three players there sitting around the age of 30 or older on this roster. A guy like Kevin Unterstein's around 35. I believe Eric Law's about 30. He might still be on the lower end of that at around 29. And Tucker Durkin is somewhere around 30 as well. It's tough to tell some of these guys' ages based on the PLL website. You have to do a little bit of a guessing game there. But um, I think at least from what I saw, those are the three guys around that age 30 or higher now with the absence of Paul Rabel and Rob Pinnell. So again, like I said, it allows you to build this roster around a young core group of guys. And what this trade means for both teams, I think it's pretty plain and simple what this trade means for both teams. For the Atlas, you get younger on your roster and you moved pieces that you didn't necessarily need moving forward with this rebuild. So you were able to get picks, which is something that you do need in exchange for them. And the biggest thing that I've mentioned here on these episodes regarding the Atlas and potential trades or trades that they've now executed is you get draft capital and this cannot be understated how important that is to a rebuild in any sport. I mean, you look at the NFL, the, the NHL, the uh, NBA, any of those leagues. The biggest things that those teams that are in the middle of rebuilds have is a ton of draft capital, and the Atlas now in the PLL have that as well, and you cannot have too much of it because it really gives you options as to what you want to do with it. Do you want to use that number one pick to go get a guy like Michael Sowers? What are you going to do now with that number eight pick, that number 10 pick, and number 17, I believe it is, that they have overall that third round pick that they have? What do you want to do with those picks? Do you want to use them? Do you want to package them to make a trade somewhere else and do something with whatever you get in return? So having those picks definitely gives you lots and lots of options to be able to play around with some different things, and that can only help this Atlas rebuild and I think as Atlas fans we can get excited about the rebuild now because you were able to get something for Rob Pinnell you were able to get something for Paul Rabel you can get younger with this team and be excited about what this team will look like going into 2021 but also next year as I said they have those six picks in the college draft next year you can also get excited about what they'll look like in 2022 and beyond as well. And I think for the Cannons and Paul Rabel specifically, what you get out of this is pretty simple. And I think for a lot of lacrosse fans, you can be happy about this. The Cannons get their first rostered player ahead of that entry draft here on March 11th, where Lyle Thompson's probably going to be the number one pick there. So you can be excited about seeing those two play together and the team that they'll now be able to build around guys like that. But also for Paul himself, he gets to finish his career on the team where it all started as a pro with the Cannons. 
So that'll do it for this episode of Taking the Field with Stevie Mac. Make sure to like, comment, and share on this post. Let me know what you guys think about this trade with Paul Rabel to the Cannons and what the Atlas got in return for him. I think it is interesting. One quick thing, though, is that the, the Atlas were able to get a lot more in this trade for Paul Rabel than what they got a few weeks ago for Rob Pinnell. So that's something that I think is interesting to take away from this whole thing. But make sure to like, comment, and share on this post. Like I said, guys, let me know what you guys think about the Atlas Rebuild. You can also check out past episodes of the podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, just to name a few. But we are basically anywhere that you guys get your podcasts.